I'm here with DJ Susi of the DJ Susi Group, good friend and client that we've been working with for many years. DJ, how you doing? Good. How are you doing? <laughs> I'm doing very well. Cool. You know, one of the things that we've been doing in terms of preparing for today is is going back and looking at uh, just, I mean, for me personally, how blessed, you know, I've been in relationships with many of you for many years. Mm -hmm. You and I have a great friendship and, and have been working together. And, and so I think, you know, what's interesting about that is a lot of people might say that business is separate from personal. What do you say to that about you know, your business and, and even just our partnership together? I mean, there, there's different levels to it. And I, I mean, just like any relationship, business and, you know, professional and personal, you know, that, that grew with, with time. But at the end of the day, uh, some wise man that I knew told me it's, you know, both of our businesses are relationship businesses. Yeah, absolutely. Well, speaking of businesses, you've not been doing real estate forever. No. Uh, this is not the first career for you or the, the first business for you. And, you know, quite frankly, there's a ton of articles that kind of give a bad rep to starting a career, you know, second career or doing things later or, or that the workforce is somehow going to be 19 forever. You took a leap of faith and, and started a business. You know, walk us through the process of what took you to arrive to a new place and a new business. And what do you just say to some of those people who say starting a business after 50 is, is not doable? Who's 50? Just kidding. <laughs> I am over. But yeah, I started when I was 50. So uh, my husband and I, as you know, moved uh, from Chicago uh, to St. Pete. Prior to that, every real estate transaction we'd ever gone through was like a fairy tale. Like Bambi came out, birds chirped, everybody agreed to everything. Everything was on time, like no hiccups. So uh, I, ha I was living in my own kind of fantasy land of how real estate was like HGTV did seem true. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and then we bought a house in Florida and, uh, it was a really lackluster experience to put it politely. We just didn't feel communicated with, we didn't feel like, uh, anybody was really advocating on our behalf, really hearing us. So having moved down here, not sure what I wanted to do for work. I spoke with a few friends who were in real estate and they had told me over the years that, oh, that's something you should do. You know, I, I really feel you'd enjoy it. You'd be great at it. And I'm like, eh, not me. You know, I'm not a salesperson. So after thinking about it, discussing it with Damien, you know, he just had a good point that, you know, the, I have the business smarts to do it. Uh, and the difference between myself and the experience we had with the agent when we bought here was I know how to treat people. And, you know, that kind of felt like that there was an opening there for me because if this person could have a successful business in do it. that manner, right? <laughs> I was like, Hmm, maybe I can do a little bit better. So yeah, it was, it was super scary. I hadn't taken any kind of test or classes in, I don't know, over, well over 30 years. So it was a little intimidating, uh, but as you know, I did, got my license and uh, jumped on board with uh, my first brokerage where I got to lucky enough to meet you. Well, talking about your first year, was it all heart stars and horseshoes? Was it perfect? <laughs> <laughs> no, it was a tremendous amount of work, which didn't scare me. It, it's more, it was more of a fear of the unknown because, mm -hmm. you know, to remind you, when we moved here, we had never been here. The only time I had been to St. Pete or Tampa Bay was to look for a home. We didn't know anybody, really didn't know the area. So I just, as you know, I was really concerned that I was uh, like starting off with multiple handicaps. Right. Um, but yeah, obviously got through those. Well, and I do think, you know, <clears throat> there are certain people that will look at others, you know, oh, they came from this particular area, um, either they're well connected or maybe they've married someone who's well connected. There are certain things that are there. What do you say to someone who feels like they have a lot of things stacked against them? Should they still take the leap of faith or what advice do you have? Well, it's not really that, at least the way I look at it, it's not stacked against you. You just have to pivot and do things a little bit differently 
than people who have those so-called advantages. Mm -hmm. I don't find that those have always been a surefire thing for people who get in real estate. Um, I'm sure you, like myself, have seen people come in who are like, I know so many people, I know this area better than anybody, I can do this job. And, you know, within six months, it's like, whatever happened to, what's their name? Like, you know, right. 